Hello, and welcome to BBC School Report with Leighton. Our main story is tonight. Gaming and how some are arguing it could be good for us. Is YouTube primarily used as advertisement? Cycling and how it has grown in popularity since the 2012 Olympics. Tim Pink. And how society would cope if there was a World War Three. There will also be a follow-up on Sport Relief at SJWMS. And we will also be visiting our brand new sports desk for the first time. Hello, this is BBC School Report and today we are reporting on YouTubers and the future of advertising. Recently on the news, there's been lots of news teams investigating on YouTuber who made 7 million US dollars in one year. He's not the only one who makes more than 1 million dollars. YouTubers are people that make videos that entertain people online. From Google to DreamWorks, these major companies have given the products and their money to YouTubers to advertise their product and give them to a for a boost. With YouTubers more than 5 billion views, this is a good way to boost their product and let everyone see what it's all about. Viewers range to gamers to bloggers and they all have the same thing in common, which is they're good at their, their own thing. There are several types of videos, like comedic videos which take a long time but end up with lots of views, and gaming videos which show a reaction or just provide a show to their fans. Many adults and teenagers say that the job as a YouTuber is living the easy life and, with, and just holding their camera in front of their face. It's not easy, so here's a couple of steps to kickstart. Firstly, make an account with an easy to remember name. This will be the first thing that viewers will look at. Equipment check. Make sure you have the right equipment, e.g. screen recorder, camera and mic. Channel art. Make an effective channel art which sum up your channel. A channel is your profile which you could upload videos to. Profile picture. This could be a picture of you or your channel name. Just something simple. Channel intro. This is a little clip at the start of your channel, again to talk about your channel and what it's about. Editing software is key. Microsoft provides a free to use software which is basic. Deciding what your first video is going to be about. Is it going to be trending right now? Likely to get a view. The last thing you'll need is a sponsor, e.g. Freedom or Gamma. Make sure you have a thousand subs to get started. I'm, I'm, I'm Will and I'm here to talk about, talk about how cycling has grown since 2012 and how it is now. So since 2012, the growth of cycling has been huge. Since the London Olympics, many clubs have risen from the earth and many people have been, have been buying tickets to the Revolution Track Series, the biggest cycling event in England. But British cycling membership has grown by 50,000 since 2008 and is still doubling today. About 2 million adults have started to ride bikes at least once a week. Also, children have started to ride bikes as actual cyclists, so they're racing since the age of two. In fact, our school visited the London Velodrome just last year. We were at the World Qualifiers and the atmosphere was amazing, said Mr Parker. The sport itself is growing rapidly, and maybe you should get on your bike. Uh, so how far do you think cycling is growing uh, since 2012? Well, I think that between 2010 and 2012, British cycling membership doubled from 25 to 50,000. Yeah, and did. I think between 2012 and 2014, it doubled again for 50,000 to 100,000. Yeah. Last year, you went on a trip to the Velodrome. I did. Uh, to see the Revolution Series, was it? Uh, no, it was to see the World Championships. Oh, anyway. Uh, yeah. So, like, how was it? Was like, how was the atmosphere? Was it amazing? It's great. We went uh, um, during the um, the heats, and so it was quiet. But it was uh, we got to see some of the big stars. Going round and round, and the big events are on in the evenings there. Yeah. Um, but it's yeah, it's got it's getting very very popular there at the uh, Velodrome. It's a great place to watch. So are you planning to see any cycling events at Rio this year? Not at Rio, but I will watch them from the TV. Okay. Cheers. Thanks. All right. Are you a gamer, or have you never even heard of gaming before? Well, don't worry, because either way, you're in luck. Because this video will be all about what gaming is, and from the old retro games such as Pong and Pac-Man to the new games such as Call of Duty, Black Ops and Fallout, what good games and gamers there are. First of all, you may be thinking, well, what is gaming? Well, gaming is to play games on a computer 
or a console. For example, playing Minecraft, which is a game, on an Xbox One, which is a console. Now you hopefully know what gaming is, let's talk about gamers, who are people who basically play and review games. There are many gamers around nowadays and you'll find a lot of good gamers on YouTube, such as people like Ali A, PewDiePie, Jacksepticeye and others. Now you might be thinking, what is the point in watching other people play games? Well, if you have a game that you are on a certain part that you don't know how to complete, then you can watch the gamers on YouTube play the game, and when they complete the part that you are stuck on, you will know how to complete it. Also, most of these gamers on YouTube have funny reactions to the game that can be very entertaining to watch. My last point would be that if you don't know whether to buy a certain game because you don't know whether it's bad or good, then you can watch other people play the game and see what you think of it. Now you hopefully know about gaming and gamers, I want to end this video by saying what the top 5 best games at the moment are in my opinion. At number 5, it is Call of Duty Black Ops 3 because the graphics are a lot better than previous Call of Duty games and there are new weapons and armour to choose from and you can now war one. At number 4 it is Counter Strike Global Offensive because I really like the weapons that you can unlock and buy and the maps are really good. At number 3 it's Star Wars Battlefront because the graphics are amazing and you can play as a character with a gun or a character with a lightsaber. At number 2 it is Team Fortress 2 because of its constant updates that add awesome new features into the game and you can unlock many many weapons and you can even upgrade them. And finally at number 1 it is Just Cause 3 because the graphics are very good and you can do whatever you want in it, literally anything you want. You can liberate villages and you can raid military bases and you can also unlock awesome vehicles such as sports cars, helicopters and a huge cargo plane. I so here we are in the SJWMS drama studio and right now we are about to interview Miss Shan about her own opinions on gaming. Okay, so do you think gaming is good for you? Um, I think it can be quite an imaginative and challenging uh, thing to do if you um, are interested in kind of consequences and storytelling um, but I think it can actually be quite addictive as well as far as I know. Be because um, did you know that it can actually, uh, ga first person shooter games can actually improve your eyesight? I did not know that. I, yeah, I, I'm surprised, I'm surprised. Have you ever played a computer or a console game? I have. What, what game was it? Um, I think I had a, a little girl at Call of Duty Call once. Of Duty. What okay. one? Uh, it was an old one, okay. quite a while ago, I don't know, maybe second version, I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay, and did you enjoy it? Uh, no, because I was really rubbish. Okay. I couldn't work out how to coordinate all the different things on the uh, so keyboard. Am I. So yes. am I. Yep. Um, so, uh, do you have any children that play video games? I do, yes. I have uh, two children. What, what games do they play? Um, well, I think, I don't know if you call it gaming, is Sims categorised as gaming? Sims. Yeah, yeah. Sims. So I think um, my daughter's played that, well she used to play that a lot when she was younger, she's 21 now, so she doesn't play it so much. Okay. Um, and I have a son who's 15 and he plays FIFA and uh, a lot of the popular games. So overall, what is your view on gaming? I think, um, I'm surprised to find that it gives you better eyesight. Um, but I do think it needs to be done in moderation and not to the exclusion of everything else because I do like to see young people going out getting some fresh air and actually interacting with people in reality, not just online. So okay. that's my opinion. Fair point. Okay, thank you. I'm James and today I'll be reporting on people's views on World War III. In the modern day, we live in a time which is turbulent to say the least, with threats from ISIS and unstable relationships between nations. But I want to find out what people really think about World War III. Today, I'll be interviewing Mr. Nicholson, a history teacher, and I hope to find his personal views and professional views. Mr. Nicholson, 
Uh, what are your views on the pupils that were lost in the wars of our schools, that are, whose names are memorial downstairs? Um, obviously, uh, these are people who sacrificed for our country in the past, uh, fought in both the First World War and the Second World War. Um, the First World War brings up a lot of controversy about um, how worth it the sacrifice was. Uh, the Second World War obviously had a much clearer um, moral purpose uh, and they all sacrificed uh, for their country in, in a selfless way uh, and therefore they, they deserve to be remembered uh, uh, in the ways that they are. Now with the um, advance of countries like Russia and their conflicts with Ukraine and North Korea's conflict with America, what do you think the likelihood is of the World War Three? Um, I think well, a World War Three um, is perhaps a, a bombastic, it's an exaggerated uh, fear. Uh, the world is certainly more unstable now than it perhaps was 10, 15 years ago. Um, if you go back in the past, the big concern was, uh, was a global conflict between uh, the Soviet Union and the um, United States and Western Europe. Um, since that receded at the end of the 1980s uh, and early 90s, there was a period in which things did seem to be tending towards more being more stable, more democratic, and that appears to have broken down. So that leads to certainly to worries and concerns uh, that we may be leading up to uh, another period in we might see a much larger conflicts uh, involving. Um, whole populations of, the, of those, for example, of World War II. Um, I think that there is a tendency to perhaps exaggerate the conflicts that we have today in terms of their, their severity. Uh, while they're very, very, um, have very, very negative consequences for those caught up in those conflicts, uh, I don't see uh, a high likelihood that they could spread and become something much more significant um, of the kind of saying well, well I just I don't see that as, as a likely thing. It's not an impossible thing. It's not a likely thing. So in my view I think that there should be uh, we should try to contextualise these wars and see the perspective uh, of say the twentieth century and the much bigger conflicts of the past. Thank you very much. Uh, well as you've heard it a view of a history teacher on the effects of World War Three. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much for watching SJWMS BBC School Report. Goodbye.